Hello, I'm Julia Cordova. Thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel and liking my videos. I really appreciate it. So last week, I potentially thought that Bulls would put up a little bit more of a fight than they had in the previous two weeks, and they did right out of the gate. On Sunday night, we went back and got to within one point of my ES support before we went rocketing up 150 points from there. And then when we came back to back test that breakout, Bulls just could not hold it. They had used up all of their energy on that Sunday night whoosh up. And then we went into a little bit of a free fall on Thursday and Friday. And not only that, but commodities were red for the week as well. Uh oh. So for this week, we're going to talk about potentially what some supports are that are high probability bounce areas, as well as talking about what some resistances are that if you didn't get to short last week, or if you're looking for a place to, uh, that might be high probability areas there as well. So with that said, you ready? Whoop. All right, let's talk charts. Okay, so let's start off by looking at this big picture ES weekly chart. You can see here, there's... And this dotted orange was like sort of my buy level from last week, right? If, if things went really south. And you can see that potentially there's a little bit of a wonkety um, head and shoulders there. And this is right at the neckline where we closed. And also, you know, you can see that potentially there's another wonkety um, inverse head and shoulders here. And we're right close to where... If it were to turn around, it needs to turn around there, right? So we're at support right where we closed. And so on the upside here, I have uh, the first sort of resistance if we were to start off by rocketing up at 4307.75. And then after that, and this is the more important thing if we get here, 4364 to 4380 especially 4380 because that's sort of been you know every technician every person is talking about that 4380 level so for me if it's start if it can get above first what is a double uh resistance here to 4380 and then potentially close above that and even better close above 4401.50 then i'm telling you there's a shot how likely is that to happen Mm, I don't know. It depends on the uh, energy that can be summoned this week and whether or not anything happens that could potentially get us up there. Now, on the downside, if uh, we start off by just sort of like, nope, not happening, uh, I've got sort of the buy or die level still at 4183. So that, if we're going to bounce, it should be from around that area, if we, and especially if we start off by uh, just careening down. That would be actually, I don't want to say it's the most bullish thing, right? Because there's lots of bullish things that can happen. But what what I wanted to have happen last week that didn't happen um, as a bull uh, or as a bull last week was that I wanted it to sort of start the week by going down and then catching it. And then, you know, we can sort of end the week, you know, in a precarious position. Is it or isn't it? But on the on the more upside. And we did actually end on a precarious position, but this one now is to the downside for this past week. So, um, and I, I will say too, that whenever you see a low outside of market hours for whatever market or thing that you're trading, it's typically something that it can hold. So for example, the election night from 2016, that low has held and not back tested so far. So it's sort of like, for me, whenever we get we at test a level that's important outside of market hours, either it comes back within the next couple of days to test that area, or it's at least a few weeks. And that was in my uh, brain what I was thinking what happened last week. I thought maybe, okay, you know what, we've shot up now. So potentially this level might be good for a few weeks, a month, and then come back, you know, and suddenly test it. But in this case, it happened within a couple of days. So I just think that's an interesting thing to think about. Just my experience, just my thoughts. And actually the same thing happens for stocks. So if you're watching a stock and you know it closes uh, near the low, but not at the low, and then after hours and extended hours, it goes lower than the low of the day. Generally speaking, I'm gonna say 80 to 90% of the time, that's just my math, I don't know. But I've noticed that then the next day, in fact, it 
the stock will go lower. So if you're looking to buy something and you see that happening, you'll know that, okay, now the next day is lower. Same thing happened for the highs in the opposite direction. All right, all right, enough of that. Let's talk about NASDAQ. Okay, oh, actually, this is the hourly. So um, with ES hourly, you can see that we closed right on support here. These are the levels that I'm watching, 4237.5 and 4198.25. Um, and you can also see that RSI is extremely, extremely low here. So it's really oversold. Um, now there's two ways that it could get un out of the situation. One is that it could bounce really strongly. The second situation to get out of this would be that it could consolidate and, you know, into a bear flag, for example, into a diamond, into a megaphone. But all of those things are ways that RSI can reset itself without price moving all that much, staying in a range. And then when we come out of the range, we'll know which way it's going to go. I know, annoying, right? We just want it to go one way or the other immediately. But usually these long things, you know, you have an area of consolidation before it figures out what it's going to do. So watch for that. Same thing on knowledge dog. Um, and here's my hourly chart there. We're, we're low, but you know, not quite as oversold or, you know, as low as ES is. I had to go back a really long way to figure out when ES had gotten this low, but NASDAQ, uh, you know, it's a little more twitchy. And so, uh, just watch for some consolidation here. Um, it would be a good sign if it were to get back above this 13.453. Now let's look at the weekly. Okay. okay. So, um, so this is interesting. I had taken the channel. This channel was in place for 2.5 years. All right. It's been beautiful. Sell the top, buy the bottom, buy the bottom, sell the top. It's been beautiful. Um, sell the top until uh, it broke. And then once it broke, it was like, nope, not coming back. But then we had this uh, potentially this bull flag form. So anyway, took that slope, same slope here, applied it to this low. And I mean, why didn't I do it before? Well, because people actually usually criticize me if I take one of my slopes and apply it to one data point. <laughs> should not be so sensitive. But anyway, isn't it interesting that the low of the week aligned perfectly with this slope? Does that mean that we are going to stay above it? Nope. No, it does not. Because lots of times we can exit something and then come back to it. So what it really means is that for the end of this week, bulls superty, ooperty, ooperty, ooperty want price to close above this orange line or else it could be terrible for them. Okay, so... I'm watching 13376 as the bottom of the channel. Now, my sort of buy level from last week in case things went south very quickly, which I hoped it would happen in the beginning, is 13417. And then if if price action sort of heads south, in my opinion, the sort of uh last chance before what could be uh, some drama here is 13127.75. That's on the weekly. And especially, uh, you know, if it bounces first, then we just want that to hold basically. And then of course the bulls want a, a hold above this channel, right? Because then potentially we've got a whole nother channel happening here underneath, right? Right. So, right. You can see Okay. And actually I should draw another dotted orange from here. I'm going to just do that on the fly. Look at you. Look at us getting our stuff together here. Uh, here. Okay. Oh, look at that. What in the world? Wow. That, that works out well. Um, anyway, that, that is sort of the level it will need to get above. It lines up perfectly actually with this, so I don't need it, but it, it needs to get back above 14,374 to stop looking so dire. Okay, that's also the key level for this week. Oh my gosh, look at that. Anyway, I'm gonna erase it for now. I'll put it back in later, but you get the idea. These channel lines have been very good to me. Let's look at uh, small caps. Okay, Ugh. A, uh, small caps closed outside of the channel for the first time in Ever. However, if you look at the bigger picture, this is the weekly chart, you can see that it's still forming higher lows at this time. Now, I added a small caps um, daily chart. It doesn't look quite as dire. It looks dire. 
But anyway, we've got a double support holding us up this week. If it can get back above or stay above 1936.6, that would be a good sign. Um, but it really needs to get above 2040 at this time uh, to, to show any sort of, you know, potential for, for a longer term balance. Okay, so uh, on the weekly chart here, this last area I have to buy is 1396.9 before potentially, see how we had, had a bear flag and whoop, a bear flag. This one's longer, so it's been getting more juice, right? So it could go a lot lower. But anyway, we're watching to make see if it's a fakey breaky, if it can get back above this 1958.1 and hold, then potentially yes, but it's looking poopy at this time the only good news is it's got some rsi support here on the daily as well as the weekly so that's what i'm watching there now let's look at bitcoin okay so bitcoin i i talked about last week um having been in a pennant around the 40k level and then it's really just wah, wah. so it's just so it's just messing around 40k um you know it needs either to get back above this range here of 43638 to 44 and then i think it'll test the key or it needs to come back and test the ambulance i don't know it's just doing a thing right now okay so let's look at ethereum okay so ethereum uh slightly more constructive looking than bitcoin but um right now it needs to get back above this mini key of 2960.78 and also back above this 2947 or else it's going to start to, and who knows what will happen at the end of the day right but it's going to start to look like it's going to head down to this pink line should it not be able to get back above 2947 all right now let's look at dirge <sighs> it's still not looking completely unfortunate because it's hanging out at this 20 ma on the daily but uh really what needs to happen is again uh we need to start doing the thing where we go up now it's potentially sort of actually it looks like a wedge here of some kind but uh for now it's it's just consolidating like the other cryptos all right let's look at gdx Whoa. all right so gdx i talked about my resistance for last week being at 4142 and i had said a couple weeks back that it'd be a tough nut to crack and oh boy was it we got a really strong rejection there and not only that, we came back and tested the triangle, went right through the triangle, and ended slightly below. Now, does that mean it's dire? Not necessarily, because there's been lots of instances of GDX uh, that, you know, look dire initially, but then we sort of open mid-range, come back, and then test. So that would be sort of the best case scenario for bulls, um, is that if we opened above this 37.54, which, by the way, is a triple point of contention here right so um the back test of the triangle is now exactly lined up here with the um trend line and then on top of that we have a gap so this is a super duper important area for gdx 37.54 above bullish below uh you know it could come i mean it's still bullish because it's above the 20 ma it's above two out of the three of the ma's and it had gotten really high it gotten really out of control right but it's still bullish all the way down and if you wanted to, if if it got here to 33.37 i think this is a fantastical area to buy um or if it can regain this 37.54 that's something to consider as well but it looks like it's got a little bit more room to drop in rsi so we'll have to see uh, where the week closes, but these are the levels that I am looking at. Let's look at gold. All right, same dealio, um, a little bit more constructive than GDX looks, only because it closed right on the triangle and not uh, below it. So for this week though, 1926.1, I've been talking about that level for ages, is super -de -oo pretty important because it, it is also the uh, middle of the triangle, the apex. Big word. And it's also a trend line. So if it gets below 1926.1, sort of the last area that I have, which would be sort of a, all right, you know, it's being tame. It took a drop and then it'll go back up is 1913.0. If it loses 1913.0, then um, 
uh, potentially it could come back and finish filling this gap. We left a partial gap here, which is uh, somewhat okay, right? It's the same thing that if it doesn't fill right away, it's usually a few weeks before you know it thinks about filling at least. But this should show some support. It might also align with the 20 MA. I don't, you know, you never know what the 20 MA is going to be uh, you know, from the previous week to the next one, but looks like that should show some support before if it breaks, we have another gap here along with the trend line, along with a last ditch support. So this area from 1833.7 to 1845.4 is the, either it's gonna happen or it's not level to buy. Okay, so um, that would require a little bit of a huge move, but just letting you know, that's possibility. All right, I'm not gonna look at the four hour because it's it's pretty similar. All right, now let's look at silver. Uh, same thing. We took a we bounced down from the double resistance, and I tweeted midweek. I said if it goes all the way uh, here, then it's likely to come back and fill some gaps. And while it hasn't filled some gaps yet, it's very close to it. It actually does not look great, only because see the wick here, the wick here, the wick here, and also where we closed. Um, it's going to need, I think, to uh, either gap up come back and test or uh, just get some momentum right out of the gate and hold it all week long, which is not impossible. It's done it before, but um, 23.955 uh, and 24, basically the 20, the late, the high 23s, the 24 level is now uh, very, very important because it's a gap. It's a trend line. It's a key. It's, it's a, it's an MA. Right? It's everything. This is a super important level to hold this week. If it doesn't, then potentially it's going to come down into, uh, you know, what I said previously was sort of my um, my uh, buy zone at one time. So it it you know let's let's see if it holds there. If it can't hold this zone, which is uh, approximately tw I didn't label it here because I had so many markers. I'm sorry. But it didn't, it's approximately 23.09 to uh, 23.46 or so. If it can't hold that zone, then the sort of last, like, oh, please, let's have this thing happen is 22.45. Oh, sorry, 22.475. Okay. So, oh boy. Uh, let's look at oil. Okay. So, oil. Last week came back and tested this purple line pretty perfectly, I have to say, before bouncing up. And yeah, it's red for the week and it closed below this triangle. But uh, if you look at the daily chart, it's forming a bull pennant within this giant bull pennant. So it's okay as of now. It's still okay as long as it's above 100.77 and better looking, of course, above this 101.76. So if it just close, if it just opens flat, it should do that. Then ideally come back early in the week and test this and then go higher above this 104.75. However, if it uh, starts early in the week um, to sort of get lower here, then we're going to have to look for a late week push. Okay. So um, there's still a gap here at this 91.59, area. However, just like uh, I was talking about before, see these triple wicks? Um, not always the best sign if price comes back and gets near them again. It could likely mean that a bigger flush is in order. So keep that in mind. But for bulls, uh, there is this gap open still in the uh, high 112s to uh 114 ish area. So that's something to look forward to, right? Right now, XOP looks terrible, just like um, gold miners looked this past week. It's interesting how they're moving together. Um, now they're just BFFs. But anyway, um, it could not hold this 138.47 level, which had been my previous resistance and held really well here three out of four weeks. The, the, Last time it tried, it was like, yeah, no, tried it too many times. It had been weakened and it just came down here. So first of all, we have the 9MA providing us some support. 
And then secondly, there is a gap at 125.19 to 126.03. The top of the channel is 122.92. And if it comes back inside this channel and closes back inside this channel, that's super bearish, I think, short term. Okay. But for now, uh, it just needs to kind of come back and hold this and then form something where I can get some more trend lines from. Okay. All right. Let's look at Nutty. What? All right, so first of all, I took this, I did add a new line here. I took this slope and added it here. And what do you know? What do you know? What do you know? Um, so anyway, we have a new pivot to work from. So 7.191 had been the previous resistance. And um, after it kind of swished back below here, it really just tanked with everything else. So for this week, from a support perspective, I'm looking at first, 5.994, which should be supportive, and then 5.708. There is a gap there um, to 5.766. Um, but if it starts to go up for whatever reason, because it's crazy natty, and can get back above this 7.191 area, there is now another resistance at 7.433. So it would have to get above 7.433, close above it, to start looking like it's going to rip faces off again. Um, probably some consolidation after, again, this huge move is actually okay for bulls, right? Um, we'll have to see, but it just got so, look how far above it was the nine, uh, above the nine it was uh, last week. So it's just, it's got, it got crazy. But anyway, that's what I'm watching for Natty. Let's look at coffee. Okay, so coffee came back and back tested my channel pretty, pretty, and, and the gap, right? So it was, again, double resistance that held and we would expect it to hold because it was a double resistance of both a gap and the channel a couple weeks back. Um, so this past week it showed some uh, green energy, so to speak, but it still needs to get back above these two MAs and back above this, um, this previous gap and back into this channel. Now I've moved the key up. I used to have the key way down here. The, the key is now up. So for me personally, um, Joe has to uh, stay above and close above this 58.59 for it to still look bullish, right? Because this might look, if I was unbiased, I'm a little unbiased, this might look like a bear flag, right? Let me just take this slope. Yeah, so it looks a little bit like a bear flag here, right? Get rid of that. Um, so we just have to watch for that. Well, if it if it is a bear flag, though, it'll come back and hit this 52.07 area. Um, and then that will give us another chance to see if we can buy there. Right. Because it looks like this is about the size of pull. Right. Might get a little bit below that, but we'll see. So it's an opportunity there, I think. And that's it. So let me make myself big. Sorry, it was so long. Um, all right. How to do it? There we go. All right, so it was um so nice to see you again. I guess I don't know. I feel like we're I don't I don't know. I have a weird thing with that. Anyway, it was um thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel and liking my videos. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the interwebs. Okay, bye.